Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Misha Charles. This edition Stop Stories. Several health facilities to be upgraded to smart institutions. GINet continues to bridge the digital divide with a transformative initiative in Miku North. The St. Lucia School of Music scores in shaping musically inclined youth. All that was the latest in youth development, sports, and the NTN Nouvelle en Creole. Several health facilities have been selected for upgrade to smart institutions. The upgrade allows them to be adaptable to changing weather patterns, remain safe and operational during and after extreme weather events and emergencies. Governor General His Excellency Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack, during the throne speech on April 9, indicated that government's plan for an improved healthcare system included efforts to make facilities more energy efficient with lowered carbon footprints and operational costs. As we hear from Funnel Neptune, this is being realized through the implementation of the Smart Healthcare in the Caribbean project. The Department of Health and Wellness, in partnership with the Pan American Health Organization, PAHO, recently hosted a multi stakeholder engagement on the Smart Healthcare Facilities in the Caribbean project, aimed at ensuring involvement in the changes at the facilities. Permanent Secretary in the Department of Health and Wellness, Felix St. Hill, says, He's very pleased that this project will seek to improve the delivery of services at primary health care facilities around the island. In St. Lucia, we have chosen 15 out of our 34 wellness centers for retrofitting and effecting improved structural and operational safety with environmentally friendly interventions. It is expected that these interventions will not only improve the quality of air circulation and allow the staff of the respective institutions to work on the more favorable conditions, but will also decrease the consumption of energy and water, thereby reducing our carbon footprints and ultimately increasing patient satisfaction. PAHO and WHO representative for Barbados and the Eastern Caribbean, Dr. Godfrey Shrimp, says the smart healthcare facilities go beyond safer, greener and climate resilient. When we talk about smart facilities, we talk about facilities that provide smart services. And what do I mean about smart services? Smart services are services that reflect the needs of the population of St. Lucia today. So smart services are ones that are, are developed through the profile of the health needs of the country. The smart healthcare facilities in the Caribbean project is currently implemented in four participating countries. Dominica, Grenada, St. Lucia, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The project is funded by the United Kingdom's Department for International Development. Reporting from the Communications Unit of the Ministry of Health and Wellness, I am Fennel Neptune. The Government Island Wide Network, GINet project, is continuing to bridge the digital divide and transform communities with support from the government of the Republic of China, Taiwan. Janelle Novel reports on the latest initiative in Miku North. In the second leg of the Government of St. Lucia Island-wide network, GINet, a donation of mini stands was made to the constituency of Miku. The project that was first launched in Miku on the 4th of July 2018 continues to contribute to the development of the people of Miku. According to Permanent Secretary in the Ministry of Public Service, Peggy Ann Sudat, the initiative forms part of the government's quest to bridge the urban-rural digital divide and address the issue of low internet penetration. She highlighted that according to the 2010 census report, only 24.3% of households in the community of Miku had internet access. Over 63% of the population of Miku had no internet access whatsoever, whether from a mobile prov service provider, school, work or friend's house, or even an internet cafe. This is even more alarming when juxtaposed against the statistics for the north of the island, where at the time only 42% of the population had no access. 
We are proud to announce that this has changed with GINET. GINET allows the residents of Mikud, as well as visitors, to easily access the World Wide Web once in the vicinity of the Mikud playing field, the Mikud Secondary School, and the Mikud Infant School. Given the overwhelming positive feedback and impact on the various districts where the GI net has been installed, Charged Affairs for the Embassy of the Republic of China, Taiwan, Councillor Bill Wong, says there are plans for an extension to six more districts, including Ancillary, Shuazel, Grozile, Babuno, Castri Southeast, and Miku South. And Taiwan, as one of the world's leading providers of ICT technology, is capable of and willing to share experience and expertise with St. Lucia. I believe that through our joint efforts, St. Lucia will be at the forefront in the Caribbean of the race to be a real smart nation. In conclusion, I would also like to congratulate Minister Dr. Rigobert and the people of Miku for this Wi-Fi service. And I want to reiterate that Taiwan as a partner in sustainable development will continue to join hands with St. Lucia to make life better for the people. The mini stands, according to Minister for Education, Innovation, General Relations and Sustainable Development and Parliamentary Representative for Miku North Honorable Dr. Gail Rigabert, will encourage residents' participation in sporting activities and spectatorship. And we walked this compound. We realized that there were gaps in the seating. And for those of you who have followed our netball competitions, and other activities held here on the court, we know that the seating is inadequate. And it was on that occasion last year, thanks again to the generosity of the GINET team, that we negotiated additional seating. So that not only will you have the benefit of free Wi-Fi, but you can do so while seated most comfortably somewhere here on the court. The project that commenced in 2015 and ended in 2018 saw the installation of 63 free Wi-Fi hotspots at 33 locations in five districts, namely Castries, Denry, Miku, Viewfort, and Canrys. For the Government Information Service, I am Janelle Norville. The Department of Infrastructure, Ports and Energy is committed to improving the island's infrastructure during the 2019-2020 financial year. This year, some $79.8 million has been allocated for ongoing roads, bridges and maintenance rehabilitation projects. Of the $79.8 million, $11.4 million will go towards the rehabilitation of roads. Honorable Stevenson King is the Minister for Infrastructure, Ports and Energy. He elaborated on the plans during his contribution to the debate on the estimates of revenue and expenditure 2019-2020. Resealing of the Mon to Armandale and the Deglo to Twapiton roads. Resurfacing of secondary roads such as the old military road and canals to Vigier roads. Mr. Speaker, in my policy statement, I will elaborate on a more comprehensive list which will be considered under the Taiwanese loan program, which we are hoping to implement in the very near future. The general road maintenance program, Mr. Speaker, will continue aggressively. And as this year, unlike previous years, where the program would shut down at the end of the financial year, we have been able to maintain the program into the new financial year through a mechanism that allows us to be able to procure sufficient material that will allow us to continue our road maintenance program. A major project to be continued by the Ministry this financial year is the desilting of the island's rivers. We are hoping, Mr. Speaker, without wavering on the allocation for desilting, that we shall continue further desilting this year and to reach out to areas that we are unable to reach out to last year to ensure that through proper maintenance, to prove that through pro proper maintenance, we can deal with the problem of flooding by simply doing what must be done, and that is to keep the channels open and to allow the storm waters to flow freely in the various low-lying communities. 
And that was the Minister for Infrastructure, Ports and Energy, Honorable Stevenson King. Sixty of St. Lucia's musically inclined youth have graduated from a nearly year-long training program conducted by the St. Lucia School of Music. Here's Anicia Antoine. The School of Music organized a showcase to celebrate the excellence of the young people who participated in the Systems of Youth Orchestras and Choirs program. Richard Payne, Executive Director of the St. Lucia School of Music, explained that the project, which was launched in July last year, was inspired by the Venezuelan El Sistema Music Education Program. This idea of having a sustainable orchestra program that gives talented students the opportunity for music education, regardless of means, is the idea behind this, in keeping with the vision of our founders. Again, the idea of music as a tool for transformation. The vision of the school is to transform lives. This is about transforming lives. This is not just simply having them some engaged in something um, to keep them out of trouble on an afternoon, not at all. In fact, this is teaching them real skills transferable skills that they can use in a 21st century world. Approximately 60 students participated in the youth orchestra and choir program. Minister with Responsibility for Culture and Creative Industries, Senator Fortuna Bell Rose, expressed gratitude to the School of Music team and the Venezuelan ambassador for safeguarding this initiative. Every culture has its own type of music. Here in St. Lucia, we have our own type of music. And in recent times, we began to develop the Denry segment, you know. And as a government, we'll continue to support our own people. And because of the tremendous work that Richard and the team have been doing through this program, it was felt necessary to have them as part of our program for jazz this year, where they could come in and showcase the skills and talents that they've learned. And so this is where we are headed with the music. We have to start at the foundation. The School of Music is providing an excellent platform, and we want to be able to, through that program within the School of Music, showcase our youngsters across the globe. The Systems of Youth Orchestra and Choir program was funded by the Winsong Foundation, a U.S.-based philanthropic organization. From the Government Information Service, I am Anicia Antoine reporting. And this is the NTN Nightly. Ryan O'Brien is up next. Hypertension is a deadly disease that is common in St. Lucia. We depend on blood pressure monitors to determine if our blood pressure is too high or too low. Should a reading on these measuring devices be incorrect, we are literally putting our lives at risk. Doctors, caregivers and patients, get your blood pressure meters verified by the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards to ensure the accuracy of measuring devices. Look for the green pass sticker on the blood pressure meter at your next visit to the doctor. The correct reading can mean the difference between life and death. For more information, contact the St. Lucia Bureau of Standards at 456-0546 or email slbs at candw.lc or visit the website at www.slbs.org.lc. St. Lucia Bureau of Standards, making quality and standards our way of life. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome, welcome once again to your update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports on the NTN Nightly News. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Minister responsible for Youth Development and Sports, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, says the estimates of revenue and expenditure recently debated in Parliament reflects a serious focus on meeting the needs of the nation's youth. The minister's remarks came during his contribution to the debate last week. This fuel, the momentum and the passion that drive our people to grow and to develop in this country falls squarely on our human potential. Statistics informs us that approximately 63% or 9 million of the Caribbean community's population is under the age of 30. Our youthful population, therefore, from the building blocks of our development as a people. April is being celebrated as Youth Month. 
and staying with the aspect of Youth Month, the Youth Empowerment Project logo competition is continuing throughout the month of April. Project coordinator Joanne Husbands notes there are various platforms on which entries can be submitted or in person. Within the first three weeks of May, we should be able to identify or contact the winner and um, we'll be able to, to really use their logo as their official logo for all of our marketing and promotional materials. And um, I really want to encourage all youth within the communities to do so. Or you could contact us on Instagram at yep.slu or Facebook at yep, Y-E-P-P-S-L-U or St. Lucia Youth Empowerment Pilot Project. The logo competition is open to youth from the communities of New Village, Conway, Barnard Hill, and Wilton's Yard under the slogan, Enlighten, Enrich, Empower. With the improvements to sporting facilities in Sufre under the National Sports Infrastructure Development Program, the upgrade of the Sufre Mini Stadium will provide improved seating capacity and the addition of other amenities. The Honorable Herod Stanislaus is parliamentary representative for Sufre Forces. Currently, our grandstand sits, I believe it's either 1,000 or 1,200 people. And with such a facility, you need more seating space. So we are going to have additional portable seats on this side, the river side of the facility. So we're looking at close to or having about 3,000 uh, 3, seating capacity facility. We are going to have major upgrades to the washrooms, upgrades to the existing grandstand, the locker rooms, and of course, with such an international facility, you must have a major upgrade of the lighting of the, of the field. So we are going to most likely have brand new lights installed in order to meet the international standards of IWF and FIFA. The district representative made the remarks during the official start turning ceremony to mark commencement of works on the Sufre Mini Stadium and the Ruby Cricket Ground. And that's your update on youth development and sports for today. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Thanks, Ryan. In keeping with changes in international oil prices and government's application of the modified market pass-through petroleum pricing mechanism, the retail price of gasoline, diesel, kerosene, and the LPG 20, 22, and 100 pound cylinders has changed. The price changes take effect from Monday, April 15, 2019. Gasoline increased from $13.35 to $13.81 per gallon. Diesel moved from $13.84 to $13.87 per gallon. Kerosene increased by $0.30 cents to $8.51 per gallon. The 20-pound LPG cylinder increased by $0.03 cents to $32.33. The 22-pound cylinder also saw a $0.02 cent increase to $35.84. The 100-pound cylinder increased from $205.39 to $205.48. The next adjustment of the retail price of fuel products will be on Monday, May 6, 2019. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Nouvelle Arquayon. Climat la terre a changé. Et ça a affecté nous toutes. Cyclone qui a venu plus mauvais. Gros de l'eau et de la panne de l'eau qui a détruit les animaux et les plants. Quand la mer a venu plus chaud, il a tué place qui s'est pressé dans la gravité. La mer Choua a aussi changé de manière de se pressé dans la gravité. Il a été et allé à l'autre côté. Cette liste a contribué à un petit usine gaz en espace. Quand un petit pays nous a essayé de faire tout ça nous a fait pour assurer qu'il nous baisse à sa quantité de gaz nous a servi pour empêcher la terre venir plus chaud. Et faut pour baisser à sa quantité de gaz nous a servi, c'est mitigation. Le climat a changé. Il a changé depuis que nous avons tout au niveau de la terre, carburant le gaz, l'huile et le charbon. Et ça a en écosse la terre venir à changer plus chaud. Ça nous est pour faire actuellement même, c'est pour adapter. Fait tout ça nous a fait pour préparer et répondre pour ces conséquences négatives à la cause du changement climat. Nous tous, ça fait quelque chose. Par exemple, nous n'y pouvons assurer qui nous protéger tout ça nous a planté. C'est vie fumier qui est naturel. Pratique caille nous pour ramasser de manger en temps cyclone et gaudelot. 
construit canal pour l'eau courir bien quand il faut. Et assez qui canal là pas les ordi. Faites tout ça qui est possible pour vivre en tant changement climat ça. Trouvez plus d'informations à ce plan d'adaptation national gouvernement et des marches ou même ça prend pour protéger corps et tout l'autre c'est les siens. Welcome back. We join Primus Hutchinson for the NTN Nouvelle Aquion. Monsieur Madame, département qui est responsable de pour information en gouvernement cette fois-ci, GIS, ensemble avec Télévision Nationale PIA NTN, qui a posé une nouvelle accueil, posé au Primus Hutchinson. Durant la visitation du ministre du gouvernement pour ces diverses facilités de sport en Ouest Soufrié récemment, le ministre qui est responsable pour le développement économique, on est avec Guy Joseph, parlait du dégoût et l'avantage qui se projet à la caille pour particulièrement les jeunes souffrières. À l'opinion, on est avec Joseph, ce n'est pas seulement sport, mais aussi l'autre développement qui a marché à faveur PEP en fait souffrière. La caille est déposée, la caille est cricket ground à Ruby, aussi la caille est um, là, mini stadium là, et football fil la caille fait pour ça ni bon football la soui quand ça FIFA a approuvé nous avons ça aussi c'est un bon projet nous est un bus terminal qui a fait un soufouillé aussi en la place by c'est oui vendez là et tout ce travail ça ministre Herod a fait c'est travail qui nécessaire et qui a bénéfice Jean soufouillé et qui a mené trop plus l'argent en Paris soufouillé parce que ça nous a à présent ça c'est projet qui a mené à Chaillonne by um, constituency soufouillé Fonse Jacques et moi quoi c'est mon nom tout est plein et tout travail là Monsieur Herod ça ne se lance pas Annoncement que ça te rend bio les mais pas castoui, car vous trouvez qu'il y a un jugement déjà en place pour la première phase du projet pour redévelopper la place castoui. En proportion pour le commencement du travail qui est supposé commencer à euh, deux semaines encore, il y a un préparé vieux établissement, les, pou, les paupières, à sous la rue Jérémy, comme place là à côté, les rivodes qui ont opéré pour tenir un travail, un travail qui a fait à ce redéveloppement de la place castoui. C'est vous voyez là qu'il recevra un petit soukou proche pour assister au durant le temps de travail qu'il a fait à ce redéveloppement ça là. Projet pour le développement de la place Castri, qu'il y a un établissement qui est très avancé et que la qu'il y a une place pour vendre divers produits agricoles. Place ça là qu'il y a d'ailleurs un haut degré tout bonnement. La qu'il y a aussi un restaurant qui est bien conditionné et puis Freddy, il y a la place pour vendre divers articles compagnés avec leurs produits naturels. Il y a une place pour les divers amusements, la place pour vendre viande et poisson, magasin et l'autre établissement. Le gouvernement a intensifié l'effort pour essayer de battre le tracassement du crime durant l'année financière. Le gouverneur général, Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack, a délivré un adresse pour le commencement de la session du Parlement 9, le 8 avril, avancé une opinion qui plusieurs études qui fait qu'à garder les relations entre Prospérité et sécurité, qu'à suivre direction, qui la passe en pièce, prospérité économique. Si les, les autorités pas pris action qui méritait pour protéger la vie de cette ici et les propriétaires, pour raison ça, le gouvernement général a déclaré que le gouvernement a adressé la situation, côté il a augmenté l'immeuble de l'organisation de la police et procuré l'étrangement de crimes des esclavages à ce étranger et à l'autre monde qui en bas forcément pour opérer qu'on prisonne et sexuel à parmi l'autre, pour éprouver la capacité pour abattre le crime qui est bien organisé en cette ci Le gouvernement a aussi éprouvé à son système de communication avec ses diverses agences de police pays. Le gouvernement général a annoncé aussi que le gouvernement a établi une meilleure relation et puis public là pour faire bataille contre le crime. Il a tuer plus de support pour l'opération de la police à ces diverses communes pays. Et j'ai fait un appel pour les citoyens établir plus de groupes de monde pour faire garde en communion et puis collaboration, organisation pour les cette ci Et c'est comme ça que nous avons une nouvelle là aujourd'hui. Je vais remercier autant pour garder. Je vais avoir une invitation pour que je puisse encore. Si Dieu conserve la vie, je vais présenter une nouvelle créole. À présent, nous allons vivre pour Nisha. Merci, Opel Primus. Et here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. 
Skies are fair, becoming cloudy at times with a few showers. Low-level clouds drifting along a moderate to brisk easterly wind flow will produce some scattered light to moderate showers over the islands during the next 24 hours. The tide for Castries Harbour is low at present. The tide for Vieux Bay was high at 1.41 p.m. and will be low at 8.19 p.m. The sea is moderate with waves 4 to 6 feet or 1.2 to 1.8 meters. The sun will rise Tuesday at 5.50 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles. Thank you.